Okay, welcome to the second part of this tutorial. Um, in this video we are going to literally carry on from where we left off. Um, I want to get quite a lot covered in this video. Um, I'll try not to go too fast, but um, basically I don't want to get trapped into what I usually do, which is ending up talking about absolutely nothing for about half of the video. Um, so yeah, uh, try and follow along and um, I'll try and explain things as best I can, but also be efficient. Um, so this is where we left off in the previous part of this video. Um, so the next thing we want to do after connecting to the database is... Um, well actually I should point out, in the last video I ended up with... I left the um, at the end of the video I had example pass here. Uh, that should be user, obviously. This is the user um, parameter and this is the password. I just typed that wrong because I'm stupid. <laughs> Okay, so after we've connected to the database, we want to. Um, what do we want to do? We want to select the database, select the table. Uh, and what we're going to do? We're going to do that using the MySQL select DB function to select the database, not table. Um, so MySQL select ML DB. And then in there, in this, in there, in, in the first parameter, the only parameter. The only mandatory parameter is the um, database name, which, if you recall from PHP my admin, was user system, like so, without that comma. Uh, okay, and after that, the only thing we have left to do in this init file is include the library files. Um, and we're going to be using the full path as usual. Um, so, what we need to do is find out that full path, and we do that using the dir name function. Dir name. And we're using that on the file constant. I believe I've mentioned this before, but basically the file constant is always um, the full path to the current script. So say if you even like it, even in include. So even if you include this file in another file, it will always be this. For example, this, this um, server name. Um, it, it was it, mm. when we included in it in protected. This server name was protected. The script name, sorry, was protected. The protect the path to the protected file. Okay, I that hopefully that made sense. <laughs> um, but when init is included in protected, file will be the path to init, um, and server script name will be the path to protected. So this is the path to the file doing the including, and this is the path to the actual file. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's fairly clear. Okay, so now we have that. Um, we're just going to use it to. Um, so this will be like the full path to starting from like the server's root, like slash stuff. <laughs> um, so we're going to use that now to include our library file. So we're just going to do include double quotes path slash ink slash user dot ink dot php because this path is basically this core folder, the full path to this core folder. So then after that we're in ink and then it's the file. So that's why we do it like that. Okay, so that is it for the init file. Uh, let's just quickly reload our protected page. See now we've been redirected to login because we haven't got a username set. Um, but the fact that that happened means that we haven't got any syntax errors. So yeah, that's good. Um, won't be able to check the database connection uh, until a little bit later, but hopefully it's right. Um, so well, that now the next thing we're going to do is code the backend file. Um, okay, yeah. The next thing we're going to do is code the backend file, um, which is going to uh, this file is just going to contain three functions. Um, they are going to be user exists, valid credentials, and add user. Um, these three functions are going to do some sort of, well, basically, the user exists and valid credentials are going to be used by the, um, no, sorry, <laughs> um, the user exists and add user are going to be used by the registration page, and the valid credentials is going to be used by the login page. Uh, user exists is going to return true if the given username exists in the database, i.e., if it's already taken. Um, add user is going to add a username and password combination to the users table um, and valid credentials is going to um, check a given username and password combination 
but it's going to check the credentials that the user entered to see if that they are allowed to log in um, using the account that they're attempting to. Um, so I'm just going to quickly code out uh, the sort of basics, these frame of these functions, I guess you could call it. So the first one is user exists, exists, uh, and that's just going to take one parameter, which is the user. Oops, right type of brackets. Second one is valid credentials, valid credentials. And that's going to take the username and the password. I'm pretty sure I spelled credentials right. Possibly not. Please don't tell me if I didn't. <laughs> um, final function is going to be called add user. Um, you can see this system is sort of a lot simpler um, than some of the previous ones we've built, namely the blog tutorial. The SQL is infinitely simpler. Um, we should probably should have done this first, really. It's quite a simple concept, but it's obviously very useful. I mean, I usually end up using this in most of the sites I make. Not this code, I'm just writing this code for the first time. Now I won't lie, I'm writing this code for like the fourth time. This video, um, seemed, well, the first time I recorded it, the audio went missing. Second time, um, YouTube didn't sort of like it for some reason, and now I'm doing it again, and that's three, isn't it? I'm sure there were four. Anyway, um, user exists. Uh, I'm just going to quickly, as I usually do, comment what these functions mean, what they mean, what they're going to do. So this function checks if the given username exists in the table. Username, like so. This function checks if the given user name and password combination is valid. I think that's alright, surprisingly. Uh, and this function adds a user to the database. Mm, I suppose we should be consistent. Database there as well. Right, so let's start with the user exists function. Um, actually, all these functions are fairly simple. Um, user exists and add user both three lines and valid credentials is four lines. So there's nothing too complicated going on here. Okay, uh, the first thing we want to do in the user exists function is prevent SQL injection. We're going to do that by escaping the user variable. Um, I have a tutorial on this in my PHP security playlist, so go and watch that if you don't know what's going on here. Um, so yeah, that's that. Um, the what? Well, ah, sorry. The way we're going to do that is using the MySQL real escape string function on the user. MySQL real. Sorry, not on the user. On the username. On the username. Uh, on the user variable. Um, if you did it on the actual user, it'd probably be quite painful, I guess. Um, I don't know. Uh, MySQL, MySQL real escape string user. Okay, so that is the user variable protected for SQL injection. Um, and then we're going to do a query to get the total number of rows where that username is used, I guess. And that's going to be done using the MySQL query function as usual. And ooh, uh, double quotes, because we're going to need to stick a variable in there. And the query is going to be select count no, um, user ID from users where user name equals something in quotes, which is the username. And what this will do is count the number of rows where this username is equal to the username they entered. So if the username is in the table, it'll be one result, one row. If it's not, it'll be zero. Um, because the remember we set the username field column to unique, meaning it can only ever have unique values. Uh, okay, so what we need to do now is fetch this result and return true if it's one and false if it's not one. Um, we could do that using a if else type statement, um, but in this case I'm going to use a ternary operator uh, because I think it just makes it a little bit nicer to have less code. Especially because the condition is fairly mm, trivial, I guess, quite short, I suppose. What happens in each of the blocks would be just one line, and it's kind of nice to just have one return line. 
So yeah, that's what we're going to do here. Um, so we're gonna, what we're going to do is return a condition, which is going to be MySQL result of the total, the first row, uh, which is zero, kind of misleadingly, sort of like arrays, uh, MySQL rows, zero is the first array, then one is the second column, second row, sorry. I think I said first array, um, first row. It's clearly too late. Um, right, so, so we're going to check that against the string one, because for some reason MySQL always returns strings. Um, and if that is, uh, if that condition is true, actually we could just return that condition. Anyway, we're going to go with the ternary operator, because it's more fun. Um, so yeah, if that condition is met, we're just going to return true, and if not, we're going to return false. So basically, if this condition is not met, if MySQL result, the result of this function, MySQL function, is not 1, we'll get this. If it is 1, we'll get this. Zero. So, that is that function complete, and we have 4 minutes remaining, so I will do the add user function in this part as well. Um, the add user function just takes two parameters I've got there, as I've got there, the user and the password. As with this, um, we need to escape the user, so I'm just going to copy this and paste it here. So I don't have to type out that stupidly long function name again. Um, and also to prevent, um, well not to prevent SQL injection, but this does prevent SQL injection so as, as a side effect because uh, the result of an SHA1 hash is always numbers and letters. So I'm going to copy that to an SHA1 um, using pass again, like so. Um, so yeah, that's why you don't need to escape the result of the SHA1 function. 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 I can say that, honest. Okay, so, um, next thing we want to do now we have our sanitized data is insert the, um, insert the row. So, MySQL, oops, SQL, query. Actually, I suppose, um, because we are not validating the username for like a list of characters, we should also think about XSS attacks here, which I will also have a PHP security tutorial on. So um, if you don't know what XSS attacks are, uh, go and watch that. I'll be uploading it probably tomorrow because it's like one o'clock in the morning. Uh, so yeah, go and watch that and I'll explain what they are and why they're bad there. But basically the way, way to protect against XSS attacks are is even to use HTML entities are on the input before you escape it. Like so. <laughs> um, basically, um, what this will do is convert any HTML sort of thing like that into its entity, which is in this case that. Uh, and when that is output on the page, it will actually be displayed in plain text on the screen as that instead of being processed as a tag opening thingy. So that's why I use HTML entities. Um, when I, you should really use that on any input that goes into the database or is saved in any other way that you then output. Um, you, don't, you don't need to do it. Like say if you were limiting the usernames to only sort of alphanumeric characters, you don't need to do it then. Um, but I'm doing it here because we haven't set any limits. Remember we only checked those four conditions uh, when we registered the user. So yeah, that's that. Um, so the MySQL query, well, what we're going to do here is an insert query, which is going to be insert into users columns, which is going to be user name, um, <coughs> user password, which right the first time. And then we're going to set some values using the values function vals, values, 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 and those values are going to be two strings. The first one is going to be the user with curly brackets, and the second one is going to be, not a P, the password, like so. So, uh, I'm going to end this tutorial here, um, pretty much right on time actually, just 20 seconds to wrap up. Um, so in this video we have coded these two functions, we finished the init file, and in the next part we will create one of the pages, test everything we have so far, 
and finish this function. Okay, so thanks for watching and join me in the next part of this series.